<laughs> All right, welcome to this episode of Fridays of Football. I'm going to be your host today, Tyler. Um, Mr. Sorensen couldn't be t here today, and we're also joined by Jaden and Jet. So um, we've been out for a while. A lot has happened over the holiday break. Um, Jaden, what do you want to start with today? Um, going into the uh, Christmas period, in the Premier League specifically, um, it was really between Liverpool and Leicester to win the league. And Leicester had to be pretty much perfect, beat Manchester City, and beat Liverpool. And what we learned from that is Leicester City, they're, they're just an average team. They can't compete with Liverpool. And that's very apparent. And the league is now safely over. Um, also, we had some FA Cup action, Merseyside Derby, which is fun. Lovely goal by Curtis Jones. I don't know if you saw that. Mm. Way no, to impress, I though. Pinged it. <laughs> <laughs> and then, what about you, Jet? What have you been watching? I mean, <coughs> I've been liking Leicester. I mean, aside from the fact that they lost to Liverpool and City, I think they've they've definitely earned it's not going. <laughs> no, just try to speak oh. into the mic. <laughs> 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 aside from, like, those two matches, I think they've definitely earned second place. If you watch them in any of their games, they've been dominant. And they play, like, a – they play a pretty – attractive possession style which is fun to see from a team that historically not very good but I think I mean aside from those two losses I think they've been impressive for second place yeah I feel like they can definitely um beat any team below them except I guess we saw Manchester City but I think they still like would have a good chance against City again if they played them um but I I definitely think they are deserving of second place I mean, Liverpool's like yeah. unstoppable They've this year. They've won the league. It'll be interesting to see if down the stretch they can uh, stay up and get top four. What are they right now at 44 points, 14 points clear? Mm -hmm. They should be able to hold on, but you never know who's going to get hot. Yeah, I could I could see uh, City jumping above them, but I don't. I think they'll either get second or third. I don't think Chelsea will catch up to them. Mm -hmm. And then um, what do we have? A couple of days ago, there was a uh, FA Cup game, Manchester City versus Manchester United. That was, uh, or was um, that was the Carabao, Carabao Cup. Cup. Carabao Cup, yeah. Uh, it was yesterday. Mm -hmm. Manchester United, this year they've actually performed pretty well against the big teams. Yeah. Beat, um, drew with Liverpool, beat City, beat Leicester, beat Tottenham beat Chelsea twice um but what happened to them yesterday was an embarrassment that just mm -hmm. it showed the class between those two sides and like for Manchester City to be 3-0 up at halftime I think United are lucky that it was only three it could have been six Sterling missed at least like four chances and <laughs> United are just they're bad I feel yeah. so bad for like Paul Scholes and Ryan Giggs and all, all those legends that just have to watch this Look at old Fergie up there in the stands. It just <laughs> makes you want to cry. Even as a Liverpool <laughs> fan. Uh, yeah, they really are just not good right now. Um, and I, f I feel like a big part of that is the manager. Like, I don't know. I feel like they just need a new, like that new manager sort of uh, kick to, I don't know, spice mm -hmm. things up. That and honeymoon period. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, but I don't know who would they would get. Maybe Pochettino, Pochettino, but that would be tight. That would be good. That would be, I think, the best option for them right now. I I don't see who else they could do. Allegri mm -hmm. could be good. Yeah, but he plays counterattacking and that's mm -hmm. not United style. Yeah, I think if they want to get a good manager, they're gonna need to need to appoint someone now or before the season's over because. Um, if they wait, when the season ends, more jobs are going to become available. And mm -hmm. let's say PSG get knocked out by Dortmund and Thomas Tuchel um, gets sacked at the end of the season. If you're Pochettino, do you want to go coach at Man United or do you want to go coach at PSG? That's a no-brainer, isn't it? I so mean, yeah. they're just they're not even that fancy fanciable of an option anymore. So they mm. need to act now before. The other ones go away. Because, I don't know, at this point, it almost seems like Allegri's waiting for one of those other jobs. I don't know if he wants to go to Man United. Yeah. 
Yeah, or if Man United want him, I don't even know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're, you're kind of right in the like saying that they're not a very attractive team to go to anymore, even for Especially. like. Would it, would a manager even be in charge of his own transfers? Yeah, uh, United. I'm pretty sure Ed Woodward is in charge of mm-hmm. United's transfers. And Mourinho made that very clear last time around. Yeah, yeah. It's, and it's <laughs> been a mess. Yeah, so. I don't think any players or managers really want to go to United right yeah, now. They're just gonna be stuck with Phil Jones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think the only way that it can really turn around is I just think they need to get no matter who's in charge of it. Mm-hmm. Jesse Lingard is always going to play like Jesse Lingard. <laughs> and Phil Jones is always Phil Jones. Mm-hmm. And these players, they're just not good enough. They need to grow these kids like Scott, Mc- Scott McTominay in the midfield. They have Brandon Williams, the, lo- the young left back. Uh, Rashford has endless potential, but it's really these youth guys that are going to have to bring them, carry them into the future. Cause Greenwood. Mm-hmm. Greenwood, that too. But all this dead meat, just, or dead meat, dead wood, just <laughs> needs to go. Yeah. Um... Let's see. What about some of the other leagues? Um, last weekend in Serie A, Cristiano Ronaldo, year and a half after his transfer to Juventus, scored his first Serie A hat trick. That's pretty tight. Yeah. And it was he had an assist to boot as well oh against really? Gonzalo Higuain. Man, that Serie A race is heating up. Yeah. What's it at right now? Uh, Inter- let me see. Juventus. Uh, yeah, they're tied. Uh, wow. Inter lead on goal difference. Okay. Actually, three really g- big games this week in Syria. There is, I think, what is it? Uh, Juventus versus Roma. Okay. Uh, Apo- no. Yeah. Juventus versus Roma. Napoli versus. Jeez. Um. Yeah. Juventus versus Roma. Inter versus Atalanta, and there is one more. It's. Yeah. I want to say it's oh it's Napoli versus Lazio. That's mm. what it is. Good yeah, but uh, this league is arguably one of the most exciting exciting in Europe. Don't forget Lazio's in the race too. Only six points behind the two of them with a game in hand. Mm. Okay, they beat Juventus twice this year as well. Wow. So I think that we could re- see a really special thing happen down the stretch. Maybe Juventus lose their streak. Yeah. I'm surprised to see Napoli all the way down at eight. Yeah, that, they I still mean, have so many great players. I know. Mm-hmm. I don't even know what's been going bad there. Cause yeah. yeah. I don't watch that much Serie A, but the two Napoli games I've watched this season mm-hmm. were them being the only team to beat Liverpool, 2-0, and them going away at Anfield and being the only team to get a result there at 1-1. Yeah. yeah. So from what I've seen, they impressed quite nicely, but mm-hmm. there's been – Sorry. To get Gattuso instead of Ancelotti seemed kind of like a downgrade. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Look what Gattuso did last year at AC Milan. Yeah, not much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe their play style just isn't, like, I don't know, suited for Serie A. That's mm-hmm. why they perform better against Liverpool. But I don't know. I feel like any team that does that well against Liverpool should be better than eighth in Serie A. Mm-hmm. Also last weekend in Syria, um, fan favorite for me personally, Zlatan Ibrahimovic ra- made his return to AC Milan. <laughs> Came on for 35 minutes in the second half, but wasn't able to do anything mm. uh, as it ended in a nil-nil draw. Yeah. I'm pretty, pretty bummed about that. How about you? <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, if you only give him 30, what was it, 38 minutes? 35. 35 Came minutes. The 55th. Then, I don't know. You can't expect him to do like what he did against LAFC like I don't know but I would yeah you would have I guess expected him to get maybe nab a goal but I think he'll he'll I don't know start uh, getting back into it and getting back to scoring the problem with him being at AC Milan is who's gonna give him the ball yeah like they, when is do they still have uh yeah, like Chalanoglu or mm-hmm. who's that guy's name? I forget. <laughs> uh, they have Suso on the wing. Suso, yeah. Mm-hmm. But like uh, Yannick Kessi. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Yannick nice. Yeah. There's also Frank Kessi. Yeah. Frank Kessi. Yeah, yeah, Frank yeah. Kessi. That guy. 
every time I've seen their highlights, he's creating. Mm-hmm. I think they m- do they have still back Yoko. Mm. No, he's back at Monaco. Uh, okay. Monaco. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Um, um, then what about Bundesliga? That uh, title race is also good. Pretty exciting. Uh, Let's see. Yeah, we're going to be back from the break really soon. That's a... Uh, RB Leipzig yeah. in first. How many teams are even in contention? You can make an argument for six of them, I guess. I don't know, Leverkusen. Five, we'll say. Yeah. Um, oh, Bayern Munich are up to third. How many points behind are they? Um, Four points behind. So wow. they're catching up. Yeah. Uh, They just Bayern Munich have not played that good. Only two point or no, one point nine four points per game. They're gonna need to show a huge improvement um in the second half of the season if they wanna uh maintain the Bundesliga crown and they don't really have a permanent manager. Nothing's really changed since before, so I I mean it is somewhat surprising because they have such like a great team, especially after adding Coutinho, and he's starting off like he was had like a pretty big impact. But I don't know; I haven't seen or heard much from him. Which is not very deep. They have a great eleven, yeah. but after that, especially with losing Robbery, because mm-hmm. before last year they had Gnabry and Coman, or they had four wingers: Robbery and Gnabry and Coman. Like, and even with just Gnabry and Coman, or Coman, Coman, Kingsley mm-hmm. Coman, uh. Like, that's a great 11, but there's no backup. Yeah. They also lost Thomas, right? To mm. He's back at yeah. Real Madrid. End of his loan spell. Yeah. For their last two games, uh, they had a midweek game where this young kid, 18-year-old Joshua Xerxes, came mm-hmm. on uh, in, like, 86th minute and scored the winner. And then it, he did the same at the weekend. I think he's played, like, 16 minutes of football for Bayern Munich and oh, scored wow. two goals in two appearances. Okay. Both of them the winners. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so um, they might have some depth. We'll see what happens. Uh, showing Zlatan up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, should, we, or should we keep talking about Bundesliga or should we start getting into maybe some transfer rumors? Because yeah. the transfer... It's nice mm-hmm. to see Schalke at fifth because oh, they yeah. have a German-American coach and a and West McKinney, West McKinney. Plays for them yeah. too, so mm-hmm. that's double trouble mm-hmm. on the American side. Yeah, and they're in fifth. It's not bad. Yeah, that's cool to see. I really like West McKinney. Um, um, on to transfers. Yeah. Uh, Christian Eriksen, six months left in his contract, um, expiring at the end of the season. Do you think Spurs should sell him now um, to just try to recoup a little bit of money? I. Th- I don't s- really see him staying. Yeah. So I, they, I guess, yeah, you, I guess at that point you need to try to get money out of it. Yeah, I could see him going to, like, maybe Bayern Munich or PSG, one of the big buying clubs, mm-hmm. maybe Juventus even. Inter is rumored to get him, too. I yeah, think. Ooh, I could Inter, see that. That one would really make sense, mm-hmm. I think, because it would enable them with Lukaku and Martinez – to set up like what they have at Juventus with Ronaldo and Higuain and getting fed by Dybala yeah. inside. And then you still have the wingbacks coming up for the width. I think mm-hmm. that could really work for them. Yeah. What um, about uh, Jaden Sancho? Uh, Jaden Sancho, that's a weird one because normally you don't see big players like that go in January. Yeah. It happened uh, two years ago with Coutinho and Van Dyke and mm-hmm. Aubameyang. That was a big year for it, though. Um, but I just don't think it happened. Where where would he go? Man United? Why would you want to play in the Europa League? You're playing yeah. in the Champions League. There's no point in going to Liverpool because you won't start. There's just there's no reform right now. Yeah. Especially especially in January. So I think he stays for the next six months. Mm-hmm. But after that, he's gone. Yeah, I also saw a report saying that Dortmund said that he's definitely staying for January, but they didn't say anything about him leaving in the summer. So mm. I could definitely see him going in the summer for some big money. Yeah. It's like, I don't know, January is just kind of lame. You don't see, no one's talking about Neymar right now. He's not going anywhere. But summer, I guarantee you, come like March, April, we're going to start talking about it again. Mm-hmm. Barcelona, Real Madrid. Yeah, I it, honestly totally it, forgot about the Neymar, <laughs> whole Neymar transfer saga i hope he doesn't go back to barcelona yeah <laughs> you don't want him to no i think that's the last thing barca needs right now because i think part of the reason that they're going downhill is because they've 
lost trust in La Mesa and they stopped using. Mm. And they have so many big stars to try to like, yeah, know, that, fit in. That what Barca has been good at and what brought them their rise to fame. Like 2011, they had like nine people from their academy where they're starting 11. And now it's, there's like one or two yeah. maybe and they're the ones that were from that period. Mm-hmm. And so I think bringing another big star is just like would just show that yeah. that's what And like where is he going to play? You already have Messi, Suarez, Griezmann, yeah. Dembele, and then Ansu Fati. He looks really good and he's like pretty much getting like pushed down to the Barca B team because they have so much, I don't know, attackers. So I really don't need feel like they need to spend like 200 million on another attacker. Here's the thing about um uh Neymar and the whole situation. Last year, the same summer they bought in Griezmann, absolutely no way it would ever have worked. But now that we know Griezmann is having trouble playing on the wing, as Truel's the number nine, and Suarez will be a year older, so he'll be 33, I think it could work quite well if you have Griezmann slotting into that number nine position and then Neymar coming in on the left and as Suarez starts to fade, and Messi's going to as well. And Neymar was brought into Barcelona to be the heir apparent or not the heir apparent, to be the heir to Messi. He was the apparent heir, rather. But um, that didn't happen, but I don't see why it still couldn't. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think he's just too, like, injury-prone and... <sighs> expensive. Yeah, expensive. <laughs> and the thing is, if you bring in Neymar, you have to play Neymar. Mm-hmm. Like, you can't bring in Neymar and bench Neymar. Yeah. Which takes away minutes from Fati, Dembele, like yeah. all these guys who they could still grow and develop, yeah. which is what brought Barca to be to be Barca. And well, mm-hmm. Barca should sell Dembele. Yeah, <laughs> they spent a hundred million on him. One hundred forty. Yeah, thought. it's crazy. <laughs> and and Coutinho. Yeah. Still, yeah, they've I just d- been spending their money so badly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's what you were saying. They just need to. Yeah. You know, on second thought, maybe you were right. They should go to their academy. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. And then, yeah, you see it again in their midfield that like. Vidal's getting mad and leaving training sessions mm-hmm. and stuff because he can't play. You can't bench Vidal. And, yeah. and it's just a whole yeah. too many attitudes. And I mean, Frankie De Jong was a good move, but then, like, yeah, yeah you got like Vidal. Rakitic is getting old. He needs to leave. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I'd agree with that. Yeah. It's and then Sergio come. Roberto is transferring from the midfield and trying yeah. to, and right back, sort of. Vidal actually, over the break, he sued Barcelona over unpaid wages. Really? But then uh, scored the equalizer for them in the derby last weekend. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I think there's no doubt that, like, Vidal and Rakitic are world-class players. Mm -hmm. But I think we're, okay, (laughs) arguably. But Vidal is still banging in goals. Yeah. And so I think it doesn't fit. Cruyff set out a clear plan for them when he was there. And then Mm -hmm. they've, like left it pretty much yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah so i think this all goes back to valverde out can we just <laughs> yeah. agree on that <laughs> yeah i think we can yeah. pep in oh jesus oh my god <laughs> <laughs> yeah, gonna... oh, oh there god. we go <laughs> speaking yeah. of pep do you think he leaves man city to at the end of the year uh, I, I don't know i, I could d- see it happening but i hope not because yeah. he'd He'd look like a coward if he left after this year. <laughs> mm. Also, where would you go? You, you can't get much better than that. Yeah, he could go Barca. to Barca, yeah. That yeah. would be tight. Mm-hmm. If Pep goes back to Barca. That would be really fun to watch. Mm-hmm. Um. All right, on to Timber's talk. Oh, yeah. Timber's got uh, Yimi Chara, which is really exciting. I've... I don't know. Yeah, I'm hyped. <laughs> yeah. I've heard, I've seen highlights. He's like really fast. I've also, he's been called up to the um, Colombian national team multiple multiple times, which is like Diego Chara hasn't, which is very surprising considering how solid he is. Um, and just having that, I don't know, brother dynamic will be really cool. What position does he play? Uh, he plays winger. Can he play centrally as well, or I think so. I think I read like a description of his like play style or something like that, and 
I think it was either he plays winger and maybe striker or winger and attacking mid, mm. something like that. What the Timbers really need is just – right now they need to back up. They need someone else to at the number nine position Yeah, at the striker. Because right now after Abobasi, you're done. And Did mm. they play a four four two at all last year with b- both of them, Abobasi and Fernandez? They might have tried it a couple of games, but – it usually push you out wide. Yeah. I think mm-hmm. we also need a center back. A Sounds kind of like the Rashford back. scenario with Lukaku yeah. last year. Because um, Mabial is great, but then – and I, 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 I paired with him. Yeah, I like the pairing of Tuiloma, but it seems like, I don't know, Savarese didn't – it's like that at some points. Like it yeah. felt like he would play Cascante over Tuiloma, which – uh, I do not trust Cascante dude, I, at all. I love every Cascante. time, every time he gets the ball, I'm like, oh god, <laughs> get it out of off your foot. He scored a um, goal for Seattle a yeah. couple years ago. Yeah. yeah, he's like negative a goal every game. Yeah, he's, it's hard to watch. Mm-hmm. I, was, I there were rumors that we were bringing in like a Croatian center back and yeah. then like a young Venezuelan like right back or mm-hmm. center back and. It would be nice if that happened, but I haven't heard anything about that yeah. in months. Yeah, I was also kind of bummed to lose Zarek Valentin. He was kind of, yeah. he was just such a solid player to have. Who was, Where did he go to? I think Houston, yeah. Houston mm-hmm. Dynamo. These those moves like within within MLS, they, I don't I don't really understand them. Yeah, I think he didn't wasn't protected in the expansion draft, and then was transferred right away to Houston. Mm-hmm. I don't know. If I went, if I was on an MLS team personally, and mm-hmm. I had to go to another team, I'd probably want to go to a new league. I don't know. <laughs> I just, I'd be kind of bummed if I had to go to Houston. Yeah. yeah. Think about <laughs> like all the places you can go to play football. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I yeah. Agree. Yeah, it was hard to see him go because he's solid. He he does his role. Mm-hmm. He gets the job done, yeah. and he looked like he was always there on like community service. Yeah, and, he's like, stuff a really like cool that. guy. Like, yeah. He had, his, he had a podcast of his own. Yeah, with <laughs> Jeff Antonella. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. There's like a couple episodes. Is he still at the club? Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's been a stalwart. Yeah. I'd, Steve Clark has been doing pretty good. I really like Steve Clark. Yeah. Clark the Shark. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I haven't heard any news really about a new number nine. Yeah. And... After Fernandez, like that left a really big gap. They could, I guess, maybe put Valeri in like a false nine role if Bobasi goes injured or goes out or something. Yeah. And try to do something like Liverpool do. Kind yeah. Of, with Firmino. I don't know. Valeri's getting old, and I think. Yeah. If anything, maybe drop him back. Or, I don't know. It's hard to say. But I, I think he's pretty good where he is. I, I don't know. I think we just need a number nine. I don't understand what the timber system is going to look like yeah. going forward because I feel like it switched so much. Mm-hmm. Like it would be a three five two. It'd be a four three two one. I yeah. Mean, yeah. We never really had like well, a they say, confident system. They say the best coaches can adapt. Yeah, but it just looked unsure. <laughs> 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 but I think Savare said we'll have yeah. to figure it out this year. Yeah. This is third season. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or, yeah. I would like to see some T two people move up. Yeah, like Foster Johnson. Langsdorf and yeah, who, I would who's it? Eric see. Williamson. Maybe He's, we'll see Foster move up to play the number. Yeah, that would be cool. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to uh, that guy? He got promoted from the system like three years ago. Michael Farfan. Oh, Marco oh yeah, Farfan. Marco He's Farfan. still around. He'll yeah. still be in the squad. He got yeah. hurt for a while, but he'll be. He hasn't progressed. Yeah, maybe as, as <laughs> maybe as he's so good. Yeah, since good. Zarek Valentin left, that's just one more spot that yeah, he's that moved he up in the yeah. roster. Mm-hmm. I remember I watched his debut. Mm-hmm. Um, it was against LA Galaxy three years ago, mm-hmm. and I was tw- by twenty now. I would have expected him to be doing maybe a little better stuff. Yeah, I mean, have a starting role since his debut. He's definitely progressed. He's I don't know. Yeah. It was like right as he was getting to a spot where you're like, yeah, he's going to start doing good mm-hmm. things. He got hurt. Yeah. yeah. But I think give him a little time, I think he'll come mm-hmm. around. Yeah. He's still really young. Yeah. All right. Should we mm-hmm. say some like final things and then wrap it up? Um, 
Yes. What are you most excited for this upcoming weekend? <sighs> Let's see. <laughs> I never, I didn't really check out what games are coming up. When does the transfer window open? It's open. It's open? It's just January. Okay. Is the transfer window. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I guess I, I, I'm always just excited for transfers. That's, I don't know. Tottenham's mm-hmm. playing Liverpool this Champions League final rematch. This weekend? Yeah. Oh. Oh, yeah. That'll be really, I'm really excited fun game. In yeah. London, too. Going to be a tough game for Liverpool. Yeah. Yeah. I I can't see them losing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just can't, like, imagine a team that's going to beat them mm-hmm. right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I back when Liverpool played United this year, I had a 4-0 away victory for Liverpool penciled in, and they were lucky to even get a draw. So anything can happen. Yeah. That's true. That's true. And if anyone's going to make – an upset happened is Jose Mourinho. You know? yeah. <laughs> if anyone's going to do it, it's uh, him. I'm so glad he's back in the Premier League. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, he is so fun to have. Uh, just watching his press conferences make yeah. the league that much better. Yeah. Football needs him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was so funny when he, when that ball boy, like, really quickly <laughs> threw the ball to uh, whoever did the throw-in and Tottenham mm-hmm. ended up scoring and Jose Mourinho was just talking about how great the ball boy was at <laughs> being a ball boy and how <laughs> <laughs> that's the ball boy like how he was as a ball boy when he was a kid <laughs> uh, you love to see it yeah. classic <laughs> move he's the special yeah. one mm-hmm. <laughs> um, one last thing I'd like to say I think this guy's name is Tom Pope he plays at Port Vale um, mm-hmm. who lost 4-1 in the FA Cup at Manchester City um <laughs> I don't know if you saw this, but back in uh, September oh, during an England see. game, yeah. he tweeted, um, uh, I think it was like, John Stones is really awful. I know I'm a League 2 player. I know he plays for England. I know he's on 150K a week. But if I played against him, I would score 40 goals. If I played against him every week, I'd score 40 goals a season. <laughs> and then, as luck would have it, he does get to come against John, up against John Stones, and he scores against him. <laughs> so, yeah, that's huge shout-out to him. <laughs> he's such a uh, G for that. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, all right i think we're gonna wrap it up um this has been fridays in football that's Jaden. that's jet i'm tyler um thanks for listening